Well, the former government minister, Eric Abetz, has supported Tony Abbott. He has wanted the former PM back on the front bench. So what does he make of these latest comments? Senator Abetz joins me now. Nice to have you with us. Uh, Tony Abbott says he wants to save the party. But don't these comments run the risk of doing more damage? Stan, look, the uh, melodramatic introduction to this interview was, uh, with respect, over the top. Can I also offer this observation that uh, it is somewhat unedifying for people to make gratuitous character assessments in circumstances where the party clearly had a near-death experience at the last election. Our position has not improved by anybody's analysis, and therefore, given that we have more than two years in this term of government, it makes good sense to ask what sort of policies can we introduce beyond innovation and science and jobs and growth to re-attract or regain the confidence of the Australian people. Okay, but no one, Senator Abetz, is even talking necessarily about the policy suggestions from Tony oh. Abbott. It's all been about leadership and Tony Abbott would have anticipated that, wouldn't he? Oh, well, that is where I'm saying to you, Stan, that it was unedifying that these unnecessary character assessments were made because I did not hear any of the complainants say, let's deal with the policy issues. And that is what I invite people to do. So when you're talking is, about is these... a bad idea... When, when you're to... talking... So, sorry, Senator, but you've said this twice now, these unedifying character assessments. Are you talking about someone like Matthias Cormann, who has criticised... Tony Abbott today. Are you talking about Christopher Pine who says Tony Abbott is throwing stones while in a glass house? Are these your colleagues making these, quote, unedifying character assessments? What I would invite my colleagues to do is engage on the policy initiative suggested like reducing the immigration intake, reviewing the renewable energy target, looking at whether there are other ways of resolving deadlocks between the House of Representatives and the Senate rather than having to go to a double dissolution election. These are good, serious policy issues that are deserving and meritorious and are deserving of consideration rather than simply slamming the person who's put them forward. And these are policy issues that deserve discussion. Let me come back to that first point, though, that when a former Prime Minister makes these comments, and he certainly wasn't pulling any punches in his assessment of a, a drift to defeat and a loss of Conservative support and ego-driven politics, that it is no wonder that people start talking, this is leadership, he's plotting again, this is a rerun of the Rudd-Gillard years. Oh, the, look, the uh, desertion by Corey Bernardi, the doubling of uh, the Hanson support has all basically come from Liberal Coalition support. And uh, to ignore what is happening will not assist mm. us in regaining the confidence of the Australian people in 2019. Now is the time to have the policy discussions, to recalibrate our policy positions and our message to the Australian people and in our discussions with the Australian people, can I tell you the cost of energy is a real issue. The intake of immigration is a real issue. These are matters that are worthy is of it, discussion. Is it also worth having the discussion right now about leadership and would you think that the, that the Liberal Party would be better served by Tony Abbott than Malcolm Turnbull? Uh, look, no, Malcolm Turnbull is the leader. He has my support. And might I add, neither myself nor uh, Tony Abbott have talked leadership. It has regrettably come from some unedifying comments by colleagues who were unable to deal with the actual policy issues that were put forward. And that is what I encourage my colleagues to do. It, this is now the time to discuss new policy, to recalibrate, because with great respect, innovation and science didn't really cut it with the Australian okay. people. And we've got to accept that message from them. To ignore the message from the Australian people is to ensure that we don't win the next election. And if there is one thing that I'm sure all my colleagues are united on is the essential uh, requirement that we have another Liberal National Party government in 2019. Senator, before you go, I just want to get your thoughts on a, a different issue. Michael Michelin, the Western Australian Attorney General, General, has said today that he had a conversation earlier than George Brandis recalls about the Bell liquidation issue. I don't want to go into the details of that, but there is clearly a different 
re recollection here of when a conversation took place. Does this mean George Brandis has some questions to answer? Look, uh, I'm not aware of this conversation. Clearly, Michael Mission is a uh, man of integrity. Senator Brandis, I am sure, is as well. There clearly is a divergence of opinion or recollection between them, and uh, I would like to think that in those circumstances that uh, the matter can well, be resolved. M Michael Mission is saying that this conversation took place in February 2015, and George Brandis has, uh, has maintained that it happened a month later. And this raises questions, doesn't it, about misleading Parliament if indeed it is proven that this conversation took place earlier? Look, uh, this may be a question of uh, simple recollection and good, honest people can have different recollections about times, etc. So uh, I wouldn't get too hyperventilated about this. Suffice to say that uh, it stands to reason it should be resolved if it can be resolved. Senator Beth, good to talk to you. Thank you again. Thanks a lot.